This is Twit. We're going to talk a little bit about antenna analyzers tonight. You know, uh, Gordo showed us one a while ago. Well, MFJ makes more than just one antenna analyzer. Uh, this is about half of them right here, but uh, a lot of different models to choose from. They all do something a little different. But Randy's going to show us a little bit about his this week. Hi, Randy, K7AGE. I'm going to talk about antenna analyzers a little bit today. MFJ sells many different analyzers. Their 259 series, and there's several variations, is very popular. I have a 269, which is basically the same thing, but covers 70 centimeters. So these antenna analyzers offer a lot of different test functionality. The one we're going to look at today is frequency and SWR. When you're putting up a new antenna, you want to check to see where the antenna is resonant. Make sure it's where you had thought it was going to be. And the analyzer helps you measure that and determine if you need to make it longer or shorter. So the alternative to an antenna analyzer is an SWR bridge or meter or the SWR meter in your radio, although these require you to transmit. The antenna analyzer is nice because it's off air. It's also makes it easy to take out in the field versus taking your radio out. So we'll look at an SWR meter first and then we'll show you doing the same measurements with the MFJ analyzer. First here I'm going to show you using the SWR meter that's in my Drake antenna tuner, which I'm not using as a tuner, it's just in bypass. I'm going to be using my 40 meter dipole. I have my K3 set to about 7.2 megahertz. And the way a SWR meter works is that there's usually some type of full scale adjustment. So on here I push this knob in and transmit and set the meter for full scale and let go of that and then transmit and on the SWR here it's reading about 1.75 or if you have a real fancy power meter it may also give you an SWR measurement just hit the button the key and it tells me it's 1.6 so 1.6 on this meter 1.7 on the other yeah they're close enough now let's take a look at using the antenna analyzer to do this as well Okay, this is what the antenna analyzer looks like. This is a 269, it does 70 centimeters. The 259 is basically the same thing. These things have changed over the years with different knobs and different information being displayed, but they're all kind of the same. Um, there's a knob here for tuning the frequency. There's a basically a, a band switch that selects between different frequency ranges. And on the top is where your antenna can plug in and the MFJ you can put internal batteries, but I don't use it that often, so I power mine off an external 12 volt gel cell. There's a couple things you should be aware of. You never want RF going into the meter from a transmitter. You'll blow up the front end. They recommend that you short the center to ground to discharge any static before connecting the coax. Also, if you're in an area with a high RF environment, like if you have a AM broadcast station nearby, you may get erroneous readings on the meter. Okay, so the way this works, you turn the meter on, it goes through a little self-check, tells you the software MFJ, tells you the battery's okay, and then it's in the basic impedance or SWR checking. The I have it on the 4 to 10 megahertz scale because I'm checking a 40 meter dipole, which is 7 megahertz, and this knob then allows you to tune. There's a meter here that shows SWR, and on the 269, it actually also shows you SDR, SWR digitally in the top. And, and this shows you the impedance, and we're aiming for 50 ohms. So basically what you do is that you tune this, and you can see the dip here in SWR, and the frequency here is 7.00. So that's, my antenna is actually resonant at the very bottom of the band, which is really not good. I should change that, which means I need to raise it, which means I need, need to shorten the antenna. But for right now, this is what we have. So, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to check the SWR in 7 megs at 100 kC intervals and see what the, the range looks like. So we know at 7.0 or 699, it's at 1 to 1, so that's uh, 1.0. And we raise this, we just tune this up to 7.1, it's, it's a little quick on the tuning. So just add yeah, there's close enough. Okay, that's uh, 
1.2. I can go up to 7.2. It's 1.5, so you can see the SWR is rising. If I go up to 7.3, and it's 1.8. Now what's really nice with these, you can go outside of the amateur band. So let's just um, say go down here to 6.9, and 6.8, and 6.7 here and see what my SWR is. Looking for 690. Oh. Okay. That's 1.2. Uh, on the 6.8, 1.6, 6 6.7, 6 2.1. As you can see, the antenna is resonant at 7 megahertz. Now that's right at the very bottom of the 40 meter band. If I was a phone operator, I would probably want to, since I have to move it higher, I'd have to shorten up the antenna to bring the SWR from 1.5 down. Although just about all radios will work into a 1.5 or 1.8 SWR without any problems. Okay, so I take in my data versus frequency and plotted out a, a graph, real simple, and I can see that my 7.0 is where it's resonant. And again, if I wanted to shift this graph higher, I'd have to shorten up the antenna. So I quickly showed how to use an MFJ antenna analyzer. And almost any analyzer will do these basic functions of showing SWR versus frequency. You do several measurements, and you can make yourself a little graph. The fancy meters have a display that shows you the graph. And you can probably plug it into a computer to store the information. I recommend you get, a, get one of these notebooks, record all your station information manually, Go in and uh, do the plots for each one of your antennas. Maybe if you have an antenna tuner, record down all the settings so you can quickly go back. Uh, if you have an amplifier, you can record all the settings in your notebook of where the, how to tune up your amplifier. And then over time, if something changes, you can go back and check your notebook to see what it was because sometimes the old memory isn't uh, quite what we think it is. So. Anyway, that's a quick overview of an antenna analyzer and how it can be useful. It's a nice piece of test gear. As one of my original Elmers said, invest in test gear. Thanks for watching. This is Randy, K7AGE. And that's a great segment there, Randy. You know, um, a lot of people don't, don't use antenna analyzers, never have. Once you've used one, though, you really, um, you never want to be without it. This is currently my favorite right here. This is the MFJ-225. Randy showed you how he plotted out the, the numbers there on a chart. Well, this antenna analyzer does it right here, so you can see the whole bandwidth of your antenna at once. Like I say, it's my favorite for doing antenna work. Uh, it's got the USB output on it as well. However, the one Randy showed you there, the MFJ-259B, is the most popular antenna analyzer in the world, and it does more than... Just measure your antenna impedance and um, resistance and reactance. You know, it it does some other things, too, like uh, you can measure inductors with it, capacitors. You can check the length of a piece of coax and a lot of other things. So while I like this one and the graphic capabilities, the 259B will actually do uh, a few more measurements just... Uh, because of the way it's built. So a great piece of test gear. Uh, you might want to consider getting an antenna analyzer if you don't already have one, or at least every club ought to own one because you can swap it around between uh, different members if you need to. And if you've got a friend who's got one, well, you may not need one, but at least one person in your group needs a good analyzer. And, uh, boy, everybody will really be his best buddy after that because I have a lot of people that uh, uh, friends that come by here and um, we check their antennas and such um, whenever they get a new one. And it uh, really saves a lot of time.